It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. Would you be mine? Would you be mine? It's a neighborly day. Hello, hello. Good evening, neighbors. Uh, before we start, there will be poems given to those who participate in the first six neighborhood talks. All you have to do is screenshot the Twitter space and put it in the POAP channel in our Discord the same night. And it's that simple. Um, so the POAPs can be utilized in the neighborhood ecosystem. And today is the last day. So kicking it to you, JD. No, I appreciate that, Mocha. What up, what up, neighbors? This is your boy, JD Jones, and I'm one of your hosts for Neighborhood Talk. And this is your girl, Mocha on the Block. So uh, good, Mocha. How you feeling over there tonight? Uh, pretty good. How about you? I'm feeling good. You already know it's always a pleasure to share the space with you. But here at Neighborhood Talk, we want to absolutely welcome all of our listeners and our supporters around the world. But allow me to introduce ourselves. We are the newest, littest, and soon to be most influential Web3 platform to ever exist. Not only is this our space to display our newest and our latest projects, such as Neighborhood Tales, but we're going to share our space with the dopest guests. And man, tonight is no exception. Mocha, please let our neighbors know who we have the privilege of hosting tonight. Yes, it's my pleasure. So tonight we have actor and producer Lucius Baston. So uh, Lucius, can you just please tell us about yourself? Uh, yeah, good morning. Well, good evening to you guys this morning for me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm over in the Philippines right now. <laughs> but um, about myself, um, keep it short and brief, straight out of New York City. Born and raised, used to be a DJ since the age of 11. So I was pretty much born and raised through the birth of hip hop. You know what I mean? And um, I was also, I'm an 11 year Air Force veteran from the Air Force, you know, served the country. And then um, and when I got out of doing that, I, I was also in the uh, computer chip industry for like a decade. And, and then I got into acting. Um, don't ask me how that happened, it just did. But I guess maybe it was just something that was in me. <laughs> And then, um, but here we are today now in uh, taking and transitioning also into this space of uh, crypto and the digital space and metaverse. So it's an amazing time. Lovely. No, absolutely. Lucius, hey, it's uh, JD Jones. And man, you know, I, mentioned, I know you mentioned that you were uh, in the Air Force, you know, uh, Mocha, a fellow uh, Marine here. Uh, and she she's definitely aware of, of uh, you know, the Air Force and, and all. So we want to thank you for your service, first off. Uh, but, you know, when it comes to NFTs, you know, what cryptos do you currently own? Or, 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 or NFTs, I should say. Uh, you know, uh, right now I own some Matrix NFTs when that was first dropping before the movie. Uh, a lot of the ones I collect are actually kind of... Uh, like Marvel collectibles, I'm usually on the VV app, on the VV app over there, snatching up some of the old comic books I grew up with, you know. So um, I, I'm I'm very much into into doing things that I actually enjoy when it comes to this space, you know what I mean. And then um, then of course I'm crazy excited about you know what we're going to be doing here, um, and I think some other things I own, and as far as like crypto. Um, you know, I own some crypto, of course, you know, uh, some crows some sheep, um, things like that. So I, yeah. I, 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 I got involved in the space uh, sometime last year, man. And I just kind of buried my head in and decided, man, uh, I, I need to know what this is. <laughs> like, <Yeah. now. laughs> <Absolutely. You know? laughs> so what I heard was when we launched you getting some neighbors, right? Oh, you know what's up? <laughs> Good service club. Okay. Yeah, of course, because I'm getting some neighbors, getting some neighbors, and um, and um, you know that that there's already, I believe, one that is in my likeness. Oh yeah, you know how we do over here, because <laughs> yeah. you know mine is in my likeness, so that's <laughs> yeah. how we do it. You know. Um, so. But yeah, so as uh JD was mentioning earlier, uh, I am a Marine Corps veteran. Uh, I did seven years, but um, so where were you stationed? Oh uh, man, um, my first actual duty station was at Clark Air Base, in the Philippines. So, you know, uh, pretty much after basic training, which is in San, um, 
San Antonio, Texas for all Air Force. Then I went to Mississippi for my, you know, tech school training. Then they shipped me straight over to the Philippines. And, man, I got to tell you, that was uh, probably one of the best things that ever could have happened to me in life because getting outside of your own backyard and going to a different country will certainly uh, give you a feeling of gratitude that, that you may have never known before. You know what I mean? Because you go to some places, a lot of things they just you know we take for granted like clean water (laughs) you know and and, and things like that man so um that was my first duty saying i got to go to you know japan korea in that time doing a lot of tdy yeah you know which is uh temporary duty for uh, for the civilians and um and and pretty much went back to the states at at mcdill air force base and and that's why i wrapped up there, I did seven and a half years there, and that's where I wrapped up. Stayed in Florida for a long time, raised my daughters there, and everything. And, um, you know, so it's been, a, I think I spent more time in Florida than I did in New York because I left New York when I was 19. Yeah, wow. So, so yeah. that seems like uh, you had a, a great life in the Air Force because, you know, I'm a little salty because y'all get the best bases and we get the crap. Oh, you. I know you salty, bro. Because, <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> man, I was stuck, like, I was stuck in uh, 29 Palms and we call that the armpit of America because, I mean, it's hot and it stank. So I was there for four years and then I had the luxury of going to uh, Japan and I was there for two years Um, on nice. Oakland. Yeah, I was in Oakland Tower for two years. And then I actually traveled to the Philippines, too. Uh, But I was, like, more of a tourist uh, during that time. Um, I know you got crazy stories about being in the Philippines. Oh, I can, (laughs) man. See, see, other, see, see, service member to service member. We know the kind of stories we can tell. (laughs) So what's the craziest one for you? Uh, let me see this. Uh, I, I can only, I'll give a PG version. Um, yeah, well, uh, cause it was actually funny. Right. Um, so, you know, I stayed in the dorms at the time and you are right. We, we, I had my only one roommate from oh. when I first went into the, to the armed service. So, uh, just a little something else to be salty about, but, um, <laughs> and then I had my own room in the Philippines. So yeah, something else. So, um, <laughs> So, but I remember uh, leaving my dorm room. And so in the PI, you know, it, you're always used to somebody's bringing a girl from off base or something. And I just remember stepping into the bathroom and there was a girl in there and she's like, hey. And I'm like, and I was like, oh, wow. Okay. She was uh, using the urinal as a toilet because she oh. thought she thought that's what it was for. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it, it is for that, but for, for Amanda. So I kindly walked to the stall across from her and pushed the door open so she can see that there was a toilet in there. And she says, oh. <laughs> so, wow. So, yeah. so that, that that was one of the wildest moments that I can actually share during this conversation. I mean, but, you know, we're not PG here. We all grown, but. Uh, <laughs> but I do got a funny story from the actual Philippines when I was a tourist there. Uh, I was telling the team earlier, too, like, um, I had went to go get a massage mm-hmm. and, and you know how that could turn out. But anywho, um, I mean, it felt like a woman, you know, and massaging me and everything. Cause they had little hands, mm-hmm. but when they got on top of me, I felt some like on the crack of my ass. And, <laughs> and I was like, I don't know what that is, but you know, I can't clench my butt cheeks too. Yeah. So I was just like, I'm just going to relax yeah. here and just see if I can just go with the flow. But I was just so like, it was so morbid and so awkward from that, from like that point on. Yo. So, <laughs> <laughs> that was the crazy story I had from the Philippines. Yo, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay. I'm telling you, Mocha, every show we learn something new about you, man. This is only episode six, man. I'm just trying to... I'm, I'm trying to see what episode 10 is going to bring about because I'm learning something to do about you every episode. <laughs> oh, I live, I live a, a full life so far. All right. So uh, I, I will share this one because this is like a very incredible one and it's short. So there's this uh, part of um, of Angeles City in Pampanga where you go down. You go down Fields Avenue, that's Walking Street where all the bars are, you know, all the girls and all that stuff. And then, um, so usually if 
you know, you you didn't score, you didn't find somebody you like to either go eat with, take back with, whatever you, whatever, whatever people do. Um, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, you go down to MacArthur Highway, aka Blow Road, and so, <laughs> so we we go down there, and you know they actually would give you free samples. Oh, sheesh! <laughs> so I would. Or I know some friends that would uh go through. <laughs> yeah, my friend would like, okay. also me. Yeah, my, yeah, my friends they would they would make <laughs> sure they would sample everyone in there, and and then make a make a decision. <laughs> Man, yo, this, and this happened in the Philippines, y'all. This is... <laughs> Man, this can happen anywhere. It, it, yeah. I'm just saying the crazy stuff happened to the armed forces, sir, like service members. I swear. Listen, wherever there's a military installation, just know there's some freaky, crazy shit going on. Yes, I'm like stuffing man. people in a trunk to get them on base. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Yo, Lucius, man. Hey, hey switch your gears, man, because I'm enjoying this, man. But, you know, coming off, you know, so let me just foreshadow. There's some New Yorkers on, on this on listening in. They really believe that New York is the best thing since, you know, sliced bread. And, and you know, I, I got nothing against you, New York, New York. But I need to ask you, man, coming from the streets of Queens, man, you know, I'm, I'm intrigued. How did you get into acting? That, that came much later, man. I, I, I think because I was already doing the music, and that was the natural entertainment side of me. But at the time, you know, you didn't see it as something you would uh, do for the rest of your life. You know, nobody saw it as a real job. Yeah, yeah little did we know, right, what hip-hop would do. And then um, I, I think it was after, pretty much while I was still in the military, wrapping up um, that, that I started, I got into this acting class because I was, I was doing a radio show. Uh, with WTMP, it was the oldest black-owned radio station in Tampa, Florida at the time. It was like damn near 50 years old. And um, had my own show, my own mixed show. But I met a, a young lady there that, the way I could describe it is she had these big-ass pictures of herself on her desk. And I'm looking like, why do you, you can't be that conceited to carry around some big-ass pictures of yourself like this. Who does that? And she's like, they're headshots, stupid. And I was like, ah. Oh. Okay, what's a headshot? And then um, she tells me she's an an aspiring actress. You have to have headshots. After that, I swear to God, I didn't hear anything else she said because I felt pulled like a bolt of lightning hit me. It was the first time I ever felt like something pulled me towards something. And whatever she said uh, at the end of it, I just know I said, I want headshots. And she told me where she went. I made an appointment. Mind you, I know nothing about the business. And I went and made an appointment. I got some headshots. The photographer happened to know a class, referred me to it, which was close to where I lived. I was like, no freaking way. And, uh, yeah, so I went to the class. You get to audit it free for a couple of nights. And that's what I did. I went and I checked it out, man. And uh, and that's literally how I got into acting. Man, that is dope, man. You know, you created your own lane, it sounds like, man. And it really panned out for you, man. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, it, it's just that kind of industry, man, that there's, you know, what is it, 90, 90 percent motherfuckers ain't working in this business, you know what I mean? So yeah. I, I, it, it's a crime, man, you know what I mean? If, you know, it's one of those things, if you're if you're even working in this business, you you it's like winning lotto every time, you know wow. what I mean? Yeah, real fuck, because that, that's the kind of grind it is. Dang, uh, I knew it was hard, but goodness. Um, but in the in the realm of NFTs, do you think the film industry could benefit by using them? Yeah, absolutely. Because we're we're working with um, with someone right now where they they want to use the NFTs to start promoting their project and to possibly raise funds, you know, for uh, for the project in the future, you know. So it it ties right in, right? It, it's mm-hmm. that next natural movement. You know, getting into that digital space, you know, they already had a couple of movies that they put out, you know, via NFT. But I, I think the issue with that was, you know, you people still got to watch. You still got to get people to watch for right. to have some sort of value. You know what I mean? So it can't you can't just put it on an NFT and be like, hey, <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, it has to be shared. It has to be viewed. There has to be a lot of the things that are in the industry now that still needs to be tied to that. 
viewership that um so i think it's just a natural part of it for instance like the poster could be an nft that gives you access um to, to the game or to uh say a red carpet event to meet the actors mm-hmm. you know or, or, previews yeah previews exclusive previews um getting a chance to like how remember how blu-ray used to be and when you yeah. bought the blu-ray you would get all these little extra <laughs> extra director cuts and things like that behind the scenes same thing you get access you know to those kinds of things if you're on the nft you know what i mean so I, it's it's just a natural marriage that kind of has to happen it wouldn't it would make sense for it not to yeah and um all right so um, we did see that you were in a film that was recently released called Secret Headquarters this month. Um, it was directed by Jerry Bruckheimer. Uh, how was it shooting that movie for you? Oh, well, uh, well, that's from Jerry Bruckheimer Films. That that was not the uh, director. Um, okay. Yeah, so the director was uh, like a, a really, really dope cat, Ari- Ariel Schumann. It was two guys, Henry Justin. Ariel, uh, Ariel Shulman, and uh, as a tag team, kind of like how the Duffer Brothers do for Stranger Things, so they did this little tag team thing, you know. Uh, but shoot, and it, it was kind of full circle to be on this film because um, when when I did an episode of Loki, you know, as a variant, um, you know, Owen Wilson was was starring in Loki, so to come full circle and didn't do a movie and actually be in, be in a scene with him because my scenes that I did in Loki, you know, I was not with Owen Wilson. So to be able to kind of like be involved with him really almost like back to back was, was pretty dope and unexpected and rare, but amazing. So I had a great time and Owen Wilson is, is, is actually short. Um, <laughs> he's, he's, he's probably around my height and shit. And then uh, uh, Michael Pena, uh, n- another good guy, another great actor, man. They just have fun on set. I think one of the other rising stars you'll see is um, uh, Mike uh, Walker Scoble, who, who who played Adam in the Adam Project on Netflix. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. So young kid, man, he, who's uh, basically, you know, he's on his way, you know. So lots of fun. Lots of fun on, on, on set. Most of my days were spent in like in a hallway by myself and then at uh, uh kind of like the school prom whatever so it was, it was kind of fun that's a dope man dope project you know lucius what was what would you say is your your favorite or biggest you know role that thus far oh god favorite or biggest i i you know that they're, they're, they're all great to me but i will say the most the most influential to me uh, there's a couple of them. Of course, is the first one, right? It's, it's the first one where you'd be like, "Holy shit!" Yeah. I'm here. Right? Here, so that was yeah. so that was bad, Lieutenant, with you know with Nicholas Cage and and Eva Mendez, and you know just going toe to toe with Nicholas. I mean, you know, was you know when you're just getting into the business, you know, it it can be kind of intimidating, um, but it wasn't. You know, it's like. I, I had this talk with myself. I'm like, yo, I'm supposed to be here. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, so it was, that was, that was a dope thing. And then I think the other one was working with Barry Jenkins on underground railroad. That's still on Amazon. If you guys ever get a chance to check it out. Yes. I know slavery is a hard subject, but it's not just about slavery. There's some really good episodes in there that show us uh, that we were way more than that. And that we had, you know, um, you know, we were mothers, fathers, doctors, like we own businesses. Um, but working with Barry Jenkins and, and Tuso and Beto, who you're going to see um, with Viola Davis in that new movie about the uh, the African women fighting teams. It's like, what? <laughs> uh, but that was really, I think, probably the most emotionally heavy thing I've ever had to do. Yeah, sir. It was no under- yeah, you know when you when you're sitting there and you're crying on set, and then they send, <laughs> and then they send the set psychiatrist after you, you know, to go have a talk, make sure everybody's okay. Yeah. You know, just very emotionally heavy um, scenes we had to do, uh, but I, I wouldn't change those experiences for anything. Super dope, man. Thanks for sharing that, man. Yeah. And um, I'm curious as to, like, um, what was the process for shooting a Super Bowl commercial that aired this year? 
And like, how far in advance did you shoot it? You know, with COVID and all. Oh man, that that shit was super fun because, um, you know, they they brought Guy Fieri in, and so that was almost like like the first day we that was we shot that literally shot that like December. Oh, yeah. So not far. Yeah, not yeah, not too far in advance. Yeah, it's a, yeah, we shot that like in December. I mean, it was rainy, but remember, you got you. We there was this. They, they still have the COVID protocols, you know, which which I won't say much about because I think it's funny. It's like everybody's got the mask on, and when it's time to shoot, everybody takes their mask off. So it's <laughs> yeah. like, oh, right, you know, So oh, so COVID's just going. Nah, nah, yo, go, go ahead. We'll wait. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like. It's like it's so it's so silly, man. But um, but yeah, that that was a lot of fun because we did that on a big set, uh, actually down uh, in in uh, Peachtree, where uh, it used to be. Oh God, it used to be Pinewood Studios, and then then they changed the name, and now something else. I forgot the name of it, but um, that's where we were. We shot that on the on on the studio set. Blue, blue green screen or blue screen every yeah it was blue screen everywhere uh you know to give the nice effects and all of that lots of extras lots of people brought in that was my first national commercial can you believe wow. it in almost 20 years in the biz that was literally like my first national commercial and, and uh so uh i was proud of that because that's what i was saying i was like man look at me i said i'm a funny motherfucker how come i ain't oh, more commercials? for <laughs> sure for sure you was funny man it was hilarious bro <laughs> you know? so uh that but it's it's, it's cool stuff man it, it, that, that was a lot of fun guy fieri was uh very down to earth i think the, the one thing you do find is that when you're working with these people uh most most of them pretty much are just down earth people who are just happy to be doing what they're doing you know what i mean yeah man that's probably why you fit in man because that, that was a hilarious you know commercial man it, it was just seemed very organic man hey so thanks man no doubt. Hey, Lucius, man, talk to our neighbors about any films or projects coming up. I think oh, the next one will be 57 Seconds, starring Morgan Freeman and Josh Hutcherson, who you know him from uh, the, Hunger, the Hunger Games. Uh, yeah, that, so that'll be coming out most likely next year. Okay. You know, okay. 2023, um, like, secret similar to like Secret Headquarters was supposed to be in theaters and I wish it did, but that ended up streaming on Paramount plus. So, but 57 seconds, um, same thing, supposed to be a theatrical release, you know, so we'll, we'll see what happens. It's, it's uh, that, w- that was a fun project and that's going to be where, where basically a tech blocker lands an interview with a tech bureau and, and stops an attack on him. He finds a mysterious ring that takes him back 57 seconds into the past time he uses it so wow. yeah that, yeah so that's gonna be pretty fun no, yeah, sure. Sure. yeah it's giving me uh click vibes it um that movie by adam sandler like yeah some, like a yeah, decade yeah, ago exactly. right right Except we can go far far back <laughs> right so 57 seconds you know basically you're going back a minute <laughs> yeah and that was uh directed by rusty uh Cundy, you know brother Who's done some things? He's he's worked on the Chappelle Show, and uh, and things of that nature. Fair Black Hat, Tales from the Hood. You mm-hmm. know he did that. So uh, that's gonna be fun. We shot that in New Orleans. Yeah. You know. Nice. Um. So being in filmmaking, what does filmmaking look like to you in the future in regards to like the metaverse? I I think. I think with a lot of the things will remain the same with the addition of, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, I mean, with the addition of, you're, you're going to see where people can come to the metaverse, uh, you know, with their avatar and experience, like say they can go to a theater and, and experience an actual movie, watch a movie in the metaverse. Or, you know, if you have a special tea that you actually get to, be in the scene. Imagine going into a scene 
you know, where it's shot and, you, and you're walking around and you're watching the actors do their stuff and you're watching the BTS stuff. You're watching the director doing what he does and you're in there like, holy shit, so this is what it's really like, you know, because uh, it's, it's, it's different to kind of see it on, you know, when you're watching the behind the scenes, you know, just a regular movie, but to be able to walk around and 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 see all, all, all your favorite actors in that space and you get you to know, watch how they work. That, that's going to be amazing, man. It's, it's just taking places, uh, taking us to places we've never been before and giving us an experience that, that we've never had, right? Because that's what it's all about is the experience. You know, entertainment is all about the experience. And so we're going to be tapping into that for you e even more so. So that's the part I'm really excited about. It's like in participating in that and the way you're using special equipment or how it's shot around keeping metaverse in mind, keeping NFTs in mind, where it's not an afterthought, it's a forethought when you're actually creating these projects. Those are going to be the people that's, that's really going to win. Because if you really look at it, man, we're all plugged in. We're all tapped in, man. That And it just gets more and more. And when you think about what it was for us as kids and what, what, what these kids are doing now, you know, they're really plugged in. I mean, it's, it's, there's, I think there's kinds of some pros and cons to it because you can be plugged in and be like, man, so I need to pull, some, pull them out of here. <laughs> you know? um, but if you really think about it, right, uh, it, it's a matrix of our own, but, but with the things that we're creating ourselves. Right. And um, so for this project, Neighborhood Tales, we're um, actually going to be tapping into the industry as well. Like, um, we're going to have a Liberty Owl Theater, where we'll yeah. showcase independent filmmakers and also known ones um, on a platform in the metaverse. So I like that that we're also ahead of the curve in that in that avenue as well. No, that that's amazing. And, um, and and Chiz and I have talked about this where, uh, like I said, I, I have a film, horror film I want to do. And uh, and, I, and I've been talking to him about, hmm, maybe we should actually work together on this. Um, because now, now, now from the bottom to the top, we can make it exactly what we want to, you know. So, so that that's the kind of stuff I'd be excited about. And especially, you know, coming from Neighborhood Tales, coming from us by us. Uh, it's an important movement to me, and uh, and if we're in that space ahead of the curve or right on time, like we should be. I'm sorry, that's uh, people coming to pick up the garbage, but uh, that would be that's the dream, that's the dream right there. All right, man, that is a hell of a dream, man. That, that is so dope, man. To, just to see the how you know filmmaking will make its, its dent into the metaverse, man. Looking forward to. You know, seeing all that come to fruition, I already know what's happening behind the scenes, man. But Lucius, uh, you know, we got another segment here at Neighborhood Talk that we like to have our guests uh, play along with. It's called Capper Facts. Essentially, Lucius, this game is a series of questions. We're going to ask you a series of questions. You're going to respond Capper Fact, and you're going to tell us why. And uh, ready for it, man? Okay. All right, here, here we go, here we go. All right, so the first one is TV money is better than movie money, Capper Fact. Facts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. You got to tell us why, man. You know we want to know. Yeah, because <laughs> you're talking about something that can run for years, right? You like when you when you have a movie that's that's in that's in the theaters for so long that it's going to have second run on on a streaming platform, and then what happens from there? But take a take a show like Friends. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. And each year, those stars are going to uh, make more and more money, a million per episode. And that's going to keep increasing each year that that shows on the air. So you got something that's on the year for on the air for anywhere like, shoot, man, six to 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. And then then that's going to get second run on a different network. And people are going to license that over and over and over, you know, yeah. to, you know, Tubi's going to get it. Netflix is going to get it. All these different places. Yeah. TV money, bro. Long, longevity money. Uh -huh. I, see, I hear you, Lucas. Just, I hear you. This sounds good. Um, well, at least you know where you're trying to go. All right. So, Capra Facts. Philippines is better than the States. Facts. <laughs> why you say that? I mean, I know why, but why you say it? 
for the people. Like, like life is more fun in the Philippines. Listen, I, I tell you, I just recently became an expat, right? I came here. I, I was only coming here for a month vacation. And after the first week, I already knew I wasn't going back, right? And, but this, is, this has been a bug in me ever since. Anybody who's traveled, and you can't tell me this isn't true, when you leave States and then you come back, how do you feel? Like, it, I don't want to really be here because it's better over exactly. there. Exactly. I like that side better. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Because my motto has become, go where you're appreciated. Right? What do we what do we deal with on a daily basis? And this isn't to be a down or anything, right? But I'm like, listen, I'm over here. Nobody's nobody's pulling me over for my skin color. Nobody's trying to shoot me in the back as I got my hands up. You know, gun violence. Another huge thing. That's not here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not looking at the news of, of a school being shot up. It was the same when I was in Brazil. I almost, I almost stayed in Brazil. Cheers, nose. I almost stayed in Brazil. Because, uh, same, but same reasons. But the only thing, the only reason I didn't go there was because, you know, I didn't know the language. I didn't speak Portuguese. If I hadn't spoke Portuguese, y'all would have been talking to me from Brazil. But they speak English here. Yeah. No, that's dope, man. That's, yeah, that's true. So uh, I want to add that. Go where you appreciate it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest to anybody who's listening, all my brothers, sisters, and anyone else, right, make your dollars and get the hell up out of America because you're going you're gonna to live a better quality of life somewhere else. Yeah. Um, speaking of Philippines, uh, have you been, what is it called, helmet diving in Baraka yet? Uh, haven't gone to Baraka. I I got my list. I've been to uh, Palawan. I went island hopping. I went to, of course, Baguio, where the weather is beautiful. But I thought Baguio was going to be better, but it's just nice weather, but it looks like vanilla. Um, and then I, I, I'm i sitting here. I got a list of uh, places I want to go. The next up is probably going to be um, the island of Surgao, mm -hmm. where uh, they do some surfing over there, but it's a beautiful island. And then uh, Batangas, I was invited there where they do some free diving and all of that stuff. So I'm just going to soak it all in, man. And then, you know, the Philippines basically will be my base for me to travel to Thailand and, you know, uh, Laos, Vietnam, Singapore, any place in Europe. It's just be this is it's like just more inexpensive to travel from here. It is true. But I highly recommend going to Okinawa um, if you haven't already. Oh, I've been. I've been to Okinawa. I've been to I've been to Yakota and I've been to Okinawa. Cause like for me, that's where I would go to live if it wasn't uh United States. But the fact is, they don't allow dual citizenship. Right, right. So that's the thing you have to look at, right? You have to look at. I, I call it if you, if you want to live that passport heavy lifestyle. The other reason why here for me was, um, it was the easiest place to come be and to get um my special uh, retirement visa, like, like, and it only cost me like 1500 bucks. You know what I'm saying? Where, where normally some places you got to put 10,000 in the bank, 20,000 or more, or you got to invest in real estate. Um, I didn't have to do any of those just 1500 because I'm ex military 1400 for the application. And man, I'm sitting here, I'm waiting for that to get approved. Y'all ain't going to see me again. Come on, man. <laughs> 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 I mean, we can hop on a Zoom. We can FaceTime. You know what I'm saying? We could we could meet somewhere in the islands. You know what yeah. I mean? But um, you know, of course, I got to come back see my daughters and all of that. But you know, they're happy for me. But yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna have to go to Philippines. I'm like I say, just there's too many. There's still way too much racial tension in the states. I don't feel that when I go other places. I'm not I'm not being tested like that. I'm just look at. I'm just looked at as a foreigner when yeah. when I go to these other countries, you know, and um, so that so that's what it is, man. All right, Lucius, man. When I come over, man, I'm just hoping when you know the times align, you can be a good tour guide for me, man, and you can rock that out, man. Most so, definitely, I'm I'll already probably done been the half half the list of more. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yo, man. All right, Lucius. Last Capra fact question for you, man. Atlanta. Atlanta is the new. Hollywood when it comes to films. Facts. Okay. <laughs> right. yeah, they just made what over four billion uh in, in, in the last year alone. Uh 
it's, it's the number one in the nation and and it and it toggles between Canada and uh and Atlanta being top destination for for film production you know what I mean so but yeah. it, Atlanta is number one in the nation. Yeah, everything's there. Everybody shoots there. I mean, at any given time, they could be shooting you know, like twenty at twenty to thirty television shows. You know, <laughs> you know, God knows how many movies. Yeah. Everything. It's just that you cannot ride around anywhere without seeing a yellow production sign. You know, in, in Atlanta, you're, you're going to see one just by driving around because there's always the title of the show or the title is coded. But it's these little yellow signs you'll see, you know, and you go, like, what is that? If you're not sure what they are, just know that's all. That's that's a production. Got it. Shooting somewhere, shooting, you know, you know, shooting, shooting locally. And, yeah. and it's pretty dope. So, yeah. All right. That's so perfect. Yeah. Um, so, Lucius, like, um, uh, I'd like to thank you for coming on to this platform and letting us know more about you. Um and everything of that nature. So do you have any final words for the listeners tonight? I would just say, stay the course, go where you're appreciated, and make sure you see what's up with Neighborhood Tales. Y'all better join that Discord. Don't make me come after you. Hey, I'm 100%. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Do exactly yeah, thank you. as this man have says. It. Yeah, thank you for having me, man. This, this, is, um, this is such an important topic. Um, and and to to see, I'm so proud of Chiz and every and what you guys are doing. You know, just real quick story. I don't, you know, me me and Chiz had just happened to meet. I was following Neighborhood Tales on freaking Twitter, and then somehow we got to talking, and and, then, and he was like, "Yeah, man, I, I I sent you a message. We got to talk." And I said, "Oh, wait a minute." I said, "Yeah, I'm already following y'all." <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, yeah, so it was it was very. There was some synchronicity there, and um, and I, I'm just I'm just proud of you guys, man. Chiz, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of your team. Yeah, you know, just keep moving forward because this is needed, and uh, we're and we're gonna blow people away. That's all I know. People are gonna be blown by what they see when they experience neighborhood tales for the first time, and they're gonna be like, and then to like I said, it's very important that we see ourselves. You know, it's very important that melanated people see themselves in these positions, you know, because now we have kids we can inspire. That's that's a big one to me. Now we can inspire the youth. Agreed. Um, so let everyone know where we can find you, like for anything that you have going on in the future. Man, all they got to do is type my name in just like in the title nobody else has that name <laughs> i don't have to underscore it i don't have to throw numbers in it i don't have to do anything it's lucius baston it's right there you to type that in it's gonna pull up a thing and i said it just like that a thing anything man well there so, you have it man so lucius. how do you have his name so i can make sure Oh, uh, it's French, so it's it's Baston, like Gaston from. Right. You know, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> you know, we had an argument about this man during the you know rehearsals, man, and I was just like, you know, they they they, they clown me, Lucius, but I, it turns out I was right, man. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing: the way the way but the, the way Mocha said it is actually how my family says it. Like I'm the only one in my family that says it correctly. So it's, it's kind of like I just reclaimed it back, you know, because yeah. <laughs> like, everyone else is bastard. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm turning it back into what it's supposed to be. Yeah, that's how uh, people do my first name, uh, Sharnice. People call me Sharnice. <laughs> Even my mom. I'm like, no, my name is Sharnice. <laughs> Please. <laughs> so I get you. I get you. Absolutely. Yeah. So Absolutely. Don't, well, whether you have a neighbor, it's Lucius Bestone. Here on Neighborhood Talk, man, absolutely a pleasure to host you. But y'all know we're right back at it this Thursday, August 23rd, here on Neighborhood Talk, our Twitter space. We're going to be live with the CEO of Hype Magazine. Talk about none other than Camilla Wilkerson. She's going to be joining us here at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You don't want to miss the, the knowledge that she's going to drop on us here at Neighborhood Talk. And y'all already know our claim to be in the newest and latest. We have to give the newest and latest giveaways. If you want to win $100,000 in cash prizes, you do need to be a part of our Discord. All you need to do is hop over to our Twitter page and our bio, 
click the link. It'll lead you right to our Discord for all the exclusive drops and updates about um, our, our, our projects and everything. NH Tales on Twitter. Also, we're heading to Nashville, NFT Nashville, that is. We're going to be discussing everything Neighborhood Tales and Neighborhood Talk and more. Our own founder, Chiz, the creator of Neighborhood Tales, will be talking in front of a packed stadium. And I got my flight. Everybody on the team got their flight. We already ready. We're heading out. We're going to be having a blast doing live interviews. It is going down. All right. And then, uh, you know, you can find me everywhere at JD Jones. And that's it for me, y'all. Mocha, as always, it's a pleasure to work with you and share this space with you. Yeah, of course. Uh, likewise. Um, so thank you all, um, all the listeners, everyone from the Discord, our Twitter, everywhere, for joining us for uh, episode six of Neighborhood Talk. So um, I just want to remind you all again, so, um, for our listeners, there will be POAPs given to those who participate in the first six Neighborhood Talks. All you have to do is screenshot the Twitter space and put in a POAP channel in our Discord. Um, the same night, y'all, don't try to come back. <laughs> and then so the POAPs can be used in our uh, neighborhood ecosystem. Um, and tonight is the last night. So try to get that if y'all can. Um, and now um, it's been. a And also you can catch us at NH Tales on Twitter, uh, Neighborhood Tales on IG, TikTok, Discord, LinkedIn, Facebook, and you can now catch the recordings of the Neighborhood Talks on our YouTube channel. Um, I just want to say it's been a pleasure, you all. Thank you. See y'all next time. It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. Would you be mine? Would you be mine? It's a neighborly day.